And the Buddha always encouraged us to practice metta as a daily practice. So that's why if you uh, look at the sutta, the Buddha's words on loving kindness, the metta sutta, it was given to monks going into the forest. In that situation, they were plagued by smells from devas who were unhappy. So then they chanted that sutta and the conditions improved. The same with animals. You, you have to use a lot of metta, compassion. You, know, you come into the forest, they live here. They're probably here before us. So you can't expect them to understand what we're doing and you know, suddenly move away and give us space. You know, they're just going to come and do their own thing as they always have. But animals are quite sharp intuitively. You know, they can't communicate really well, but they can sense danger. So after a while, they sense that we are not dangerous if we're not attacking them, chasing them. So then they'll relax. Generally speaking, they, t they tend to relax and just carry on with their business and let you carry on with yours. They carry on with theirs. don't hunt and they get to know that whereas other properties sometimes the hunters are going on to those properties it only takes once or twice for someone to shoot a gun and the animals pick up on that and they know because it's in their own interest to stay away they get the gun oil the smell of the car spotlight they remember so then they're less likely to hang out there um, They'll, they'll, they'll go anywhere as if it's forest, so where our neighbours have forest and they're probably well, the animals will go in there. But just generally hanging out, they won't hang, the animals won't hang out so much on those properties because they less, feel less safe and you know, it's like there's competition from domestic animals, there's the threat of hunting, the atmosphere doesn't seem the same, I would say, for them. Whereas here, there's no competition, they can eat whatever they want. We don't hunt. And they see us every day and they see we're no threat. And then actually that's a, in their favor because they can see we can protect them. Animals are like that. They sense where is safe, where is dangerous, and they act accordingly. And so living with the monks living here year after year, they, they sense that we're safe. You might meet a deer and the deer still goes whack. But then off after, after it's gone whack, it just carries on. It doesn't run miles away and you know, fear for its life. It just makes its noise, but then it carries on. And it knows it doesn't have to run miles away so we don't shoot them. But occasionally our paths cross, literally. You walk along a path and meet something, bump into something. So in those more unpredictable situations, again, just be mindful and alert and use meta so you see what's appropriate. Often standing still is the easiest thing with an animal and you let the animal make the move they want to move. They want to run away or walk away. But if it's a snake, maybe it'll slither away. So but you're always aiming to not, not provoke them, stir them up. And then it's not really a problem. bringing up metta and metta leads on to karuna compassion you know they're stuck in that form they can't really understand the dhamma or make much merit so you, have, you feel sorry for them because they're going to maybe be in that form for many lifetimes before that karma wears off have to accept they're going to do things that are annoying because they don't understand what we're doing so they'll make noises they'll poo in the wrong place they will make their nest in your cootie or one of your mice or ants they'll do that 
they're just following instinct. So it's not a personal attack on us. It's just we share the world with them and we have to remember that we're sharing the world. If you show metta, you're kind to them, then they'll respond to that. So like you see, like these ducks, when we first came here, the ducks just flew away. They were scared because people used to shoot them or animals would eat them. Now they're much more relaxed and hang around. Same with the deer. The deer were much more scarce when we arrived now. They're all hanging around. A meta, you can see the meta brings problems because if you're kind to animals, well then they'll hang around more, they'll do more distractions for the deer, eat the plants, the kangaroos eat the plants, the wombats eat the plants. But maybe it's a small price to play. Yeah, they, they eat a few extra trees or whatever it is, but they're happy, they're at peace, so just leave them be. problem is with metta is that you know, you see animals more, you're closer to them a little bit. Maybe you forget that they're animals, especially with pets and, and those sort of wild animals that sometimes get tamed. We show metta to kangaroos by letting them eat and relax and live in the monastery. We don't go as far as feeding them because then they would be coming in all the time and maybe hang around the kitchen and if you've got young kids or People who are not familiar with animals, you can have problems because they become aggressive or wanting the food and, and people don't understand and then get kicked or bitten or whatever. So birds, kangaroos and things, you have to be a little bit careful because they can change. If they feel threatened suddenly they'll be aggressive because they're animals. Being meta has to be balanced by mindfulness and wisdom. You see what's appropriate. Really, people are the same, aren't they? You, with strangers, you don't know. You, basically, you, you use meta, goodwill, friendliness, give them respect um, as a basic sort of starting point. And then you get to know someone, well, maybe you can help them if they need help, you can be friends with them. Some people you get to know, you don't really get on well together, so you have to be a bit careful because you don't get on well, you don't have the same character. But you still have Meta and Karuna. You know, everyone you meet, you wish them well. You hope that they progress in their practice, that they, their life is successful, they're healthy, successful. That's your basic wish. But some people you can spend more time with, get on well with others because your character is different. You just know them, but you don't have much to do with them because you don't get on well together. You have to accept that because of karma, everyone is different. So we're drawn to some people more than others. But our basic wish for everyone is, is goodwill and wish them all to be happy and successful. And if they are successful, for the success to continue. If they're suffering, you wish for them to overcome their suffering. You just keep putting that into practice. Um, how to help people, you know, with meta, it's a bit like animals, you have to learn how to do it skillfully. You might have an idea, I should help this person, I can help them, I can give them something, or I can give them some advice, or I can go and do something for them. But that's your idea and your thoughts, and maybe it will work, maybe it's a good thing. But sometimes we get it wrong, so we have to be able to adjust. 
or sometimes the person doesn't want our help or rejects it or sometimes they don't appreciate it so you, you have to also balance your meta with wisdom be ready for people's reactions and ready to observe how your meta is going maybe it have to adjust and then show your meta in a different way or I'll just wait and be more quiet because whatever you do doesn't get accepted or appreciated. Well, one way the precepts, the Vinaya training works is that we establish the intention to follow the rules train with the rules, use them as a way to train ourselves. So if you make that intention out of respect, out of faith in the Buddha, out of respect, faith in Ajahn Chah, you really want to follow the training, commit to the training. And that will bring up the right attitude so that in, your, in a situation where you're tempted to break a rule or you're in a situation where you have to make a choice, say a fly is bothering you, what do you do? If your commitment to the training is strong, that's never an option to break the rule. It's always, what else can I do in this situation to solve the problem, but I'm not going to break the rule. So it sets up the right thinking process. You know, you're looking for a way to deal with this problem. What solution can I find? I'm maintaining the Vinaya but dealing with the problem and each problem will have different solutions um, sometimes you have to experiment a bit and learn from the situation you have to use different reflections to help you understand and cope with the situation and there's also the practical solutions so you know say it's these, this time of year we get the March flies coming out and they sting, they really hurt. So if you're outdoors walking meditation, or like yesterday we were working, a lot of people were being bothered by them. So number one, maybe go and find a, a, a product, you know, an insect repellent that works with these particular kinds of flies, put that on. Um, or temporarily go indoors, change your activity to get away from them. You, know, you think in this way, you don't think, kill it. <laughs> you're already, from the first moment the problem emerges, you're not thinking in that way anymore because of, your, because of your love, your commitment for the training, to the rules. It, immediately you discount the more negative responses you might, as a lay person, have had. Uh, and then it's cre you're creative because once you block off that, you say, I'm not going to kill this because I respect life and you appreciate why you're doing that. It's a voluntary decision based on an understanding that all forms of life, even uh, stinging insects or annoying insects, every kind of life wants to live. They feel pain and pleasure like us, to some degree at least. And so the answer to the problem is never going to be killing. And that would also be harboring a negative intention in your mind, harboring anger, increasing your tendency to, to have more of those negative intentions if you follow it, you're reinforcing that. So you've made that decision, I'm not going to follow that negative thought, that impulse, even if it arises. You know, you're f frustrated in a situation, working or walking meditation. It's annoying. So the thought may come up, you just want to squash them, destroy them, but you straight away have another thought, say, I'm not going to do that. So then you have to think, well, what can I do? So sometimes all you can do is endure for a while. You endure the annoying insect. Um, but in the long term, well, you're more creative. So you use your common sense and your intelligence and you just see how can you deal with this problem in a way that you're not killing, but you're uh, reducing the, uh, the the annoying nature of the insect or, the, or the, reducing the problem, dealing with the problem in a wise, non-violent, peaceful way. Your, your mind feels at peace, you feel good about yourself, you're not killing, but you maybe are escaping the, uh, the annoying or bothersome nature of the insect.
you don't think of killing the, the pest, you think more of how to prevent them coming in, what, what ways can you use. Say like our cooties, we, we put the oily rags, that's what I do in my cootie, I've got the oily rags around the, the stumps. So that can work as long as the oil is still there, that will work. Maybe later you get some fresh oil and put it on them after a few years when they've dried out. So once you've got the system in place, then it can work indefinitely. So you're always thinking in that way rather than destruction. You're just thinking more of prevention and what are the reasons that bring pests, how can I deal with that? And occasionally you also have to just be patient with the situation rather than kill. You just practice patience and often pests and insects are seasonal. So you, you wait a while and they go by themselves quite often without you having to do anything. I've seen that many times. Mosquitoes come, you just shoo them away without getting upset and without hurting them. Ants come to bite you, you just try to carefully extract yourself from them and sweep them away or you move away from them. If you've trained yourself regularly, then you just can fit in back into that training anytime you need it. So if you go and stay out in a tent in the forest, you, you, you've done it before, you know what the problem is, you know how to deal with it because you've done, dealt with it before and you just carry on. What helps also is the reflecting on why you're practicing and you know the advantages of, of living simply in the forest. You get seclusion, you get a chance to be really with yourself maybe go deeper into meditation or just learn things that you, you don't learn in another situation. So that benefit is, makes you willing to endure the, the interference, the annoyance of insects or the disturbing nature of them. Uh, but you also have your practical skills that you learn, you know, how to use a, a net or use repellent. Or, we got lots of joysticks, sometimes might they like joysticks on their chongkrong path and let the smoke just come up. You can just get a whole handful of joysticks, light them, put them in the path, and for half an hour, however long the joysticks last, you get the smoke and the smell, and that often um, keeps insects back. You know, there's a few different techniques you can use, and you just learn how to keep applying them when, they, when you need to.